Thank you for attending the Tuesday evening speaker series, everyone. Tonight, Eric Bretter, Assistant Professor of Industrial Electronics Technology and Advanced Manufacturing, and Katie Thatch, Engineering Technology Program Liaison, they're going to provide a presentation on PVCC's Advanced Manufacturing Programs. And you, they're welcoming questions at any point in the presentation. So y'all just take it away. Yeah, thanks. Awesome. Well, yeah, thanks for having us. Oh, my pleasure. We'll probably do that a lot, like. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, I'll, uh, thank you all for coming. Um, we'll do some soft introductions, and then I think we'll talk about the, the program a little bit. Um, we have a short presentation. Uh, we would love for you guys to ask questions throughout. Uh, let us know if you have any um, thoughts or comments. Uh, feel free to just jump in. You can unmute yourself and just shout them out and we'll, we'll be happy to address. I'll also look at the chat. So if you feel more comfortable throwing something in the chat, please feel free to do so. Um, we'll talk a little bit about our program, some of the history and some of the cool things going on right now. Um, and I'll let, I'll let Katie uh, start us off. Okay, thank you. So do you wanna, uh, well, I'm Katie Thatch. I'm the program liaison for this program, Industrial Electronics Technology. And basically that means I just help with, I don't teach, but I help with all the other things. So I really love connecting with students. Um, I get to go out and um, students and meet the industry leaders and um, we go into high schools and I can help with advising. So yeah, we're really grateful to have an extra person in this program to be able to connect with students like this. And that's why we, kind of put in that personalized piece. We want to, um, this program, it can be um, really tailored to what students' interests are. And so we're going to share that with you tonight. And again, why I think it's awesome just to go ahead and ask questions because um, we, we want to know what your interests are and how we can help you. And Eric, why don't introduce yourself again, maybe. Sure. Um, I I was lucky enough to start here at uh, Piedmont a couple years ago. Um, this program was sort of refaced from an old electronics program. Uh, we received an NSF ATE grant um, and that helped fund uh, sort of my position here and Katie's position. Um, and it allowed us the time to go out and change this program, modernize it, make some really cool adjustments and um, we took some classrooms and turned them into some lab spaces and uh, we've moved pretty quickly. We've got three major CNC machines, um, two uh, CNC mills and a CNC router table. We've got some welding equipment. Um, we teach CAD courses. We teach robotics and automation. We teach industrial PLC control classes. So uh, we have quite a lot of different things going on and it's taken us the last um, three years to really put some of that uh, together with myself, Katie, um, and a whole, a whole bunch of people here at PVCC. Uh, we've got a pretty strong team um, that's really geared toward making this a successful program. Um, and we'll talk about some of the cool things that, that we do. I'm lucky enough to have come in as a, uh, my last job was a high school woodworking teacher. I uh, thoroughly enjoy just uh, the educational process and learning. Um, I collect machines myself off of like Craigslist and eBay. Uh, last month I drove to Ohio to pick up a 2,000 pound joiner uh, and put it in my basement. Um, so it's uh, it all kind of just melds together uh, for me. The interest is real, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's more of a maybe an obsession, I'm not sure. <laughs> um, uh, but I, I just I thoroughly enjoy machine design and CAD and um, programming and sort of all of these interactions together and I love designing and building my own personal projects and um, oftentimes I'll try to bring some of that stuff into the classroom which I think is a lot of fun and I, I like to allow students to do the same. I think it's more enjoyable when you're working on something that's meaningful to you um, and you have the ability to take some of the stuff that we're learning and apply it to something more interesting of your, your choosing. So that's built into almost all of the classes, which uh, is usually really fun. And it's great for me to see what people come up with every year. And um, yeah, I just feel like I'm in a, in a fun spot here at PVCC. 
And uh, this has been a really uh, exciting program to watch grow. And for all of you interested, we're right on the cusp of, I think, hitting a really nice stride and we're applying for another grant uh, this month, actually, to continue the, the growth and sort of uh, just see where we can take this thing. So uh, without, without further ado. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, lots of exciting things. So um, oh, I like to start off. This is a quick two minute video. And it just um, is pretty awesome to see about all the different facets of manufacturing. So I'm going to just start this. But it's pretty fantastic. The manufacturing process are really well documented in just that simple part of design to uh, production manufacturing on some CNC machines to testing the bolt and then, you know, customizing it and going through all of the product management software. They do a really good job of checking uh, a lot of boxes. So it's, it's a fun, it's a fun video. Yes. That's amazing. That's cool, right? Yeah. That's amazing how many processes it goes through. Uh, yeah. And so it, those are some of the things that um, it, it gives us a good picture of some of the stuff that we're kind of looking forward to in our program. It's a multi multifaceted uh, program. We focus on mechanical skills. We focus on programmatic skills. We focus on um, machine uh, learning. So uh, understanding how tools and machines work. Uh, we focus on uh, electronics, soldering, robotics, um, automation and industry, um, some data science and collection, CAD CAM. So it's, it's quite a lot of pieces to develop an overview of a lot of areas of manufacturing and then understanding those processes. Yeah, um, definitely. And so we wanted that, that first slide of what interests you. People come to us wanting to get started in the program or take classes for a lot of different reasons. Um, many of them what are looking for credentials, understandably. And so I thought um, we would kind of hit the broad overview of what is possible. And definitely when you, if you do decide to take the program and take classes, we, we meet with students and can talk through what's best for you because it can be overwhelming such as this chart. But the point <laughs> is um, the specialization, there's three, basically three pathways that are possible. And like Eric was saying, there's a specialization in electronics if that's your interest. There's a specialization in mechanical. And then there's a general, which kind of melts the two together. And um, what stackable means is that along the way you achieve um, certificates. Like as, as students get started, I really usually suggest that they be green classes in the fall and the spring. That's the um, manufacturing technology certificate. So within two semesters, most students have a manufacturing technology certificate. And those are entry level foundational classes. And um, yeah, CAD, CAD skills, which are huge. All the um, companies are asking for that. Intro, intro electronics, you get an OSHA certification um, as you go through in the SAF 130. And then we also bring in the, some the general education classes, getting you in the math. Um, the math is technical math which the goal, it's applied math, and the goal really, Eric's working with faculty, um, even kind of growing this year on really melding those concepts of what you learn in the math class with what's taught in the program classes. So that's the same. Yeah, and we're, we're really hoping to take some of those concepts and apply them to the other classes. Um, and that's definitely a work in progress right now to take a technical math class and use some examples from electronics, examples from CAD, and look at you know the application of trigonometry, not just the repetitive math problems, um, the application of uh, you know algebra in solving equations for electricity. And then ideally, you go to your uh, electronics class, your ACDC fundamentals, and then you practice that in real life and build the circuit. Um, so hopefully, those go hand in hand. So. It makes both sides a little bit stronger and also just 
easier to understand. Uh, I think it makes it more fun when you get to do something. Uh, that's just my personal take. Um, but yeah, ideally most students come in and, and you can hit the ground running with a full semester and that should give you some time to kind of make some big decisions. Like where do you want to go with this? Do you want to focus on some of the mechanical stuff? Do you want to focus on electronics or do you like a little bit of both and how they interact with each other? And then you can make a solid decision second semester. Um, we also have a lot of students that are working full time and, you know, trying to balance family life and uh, lots of other things. Um, and we're pretty flexible in that a lot of our classes are in the evenings to try to accommodate nine to five schedules. Um, and a lot of employers we found are pretty flexible with allowing people to move their work schedules around and things like that for like a four o'clock class. Um, so it's, it's definitely helped, I think, uh, increase the number of students because it's given people that option to take uh, a class once a week, twice a week. Um, and then we try to stack a lot of the classes within an evening so that, you know, you're not trying to take five classes once, you know, for two hours each night. We'll have one day of taking two or three classes, uh, which I think is a little bit nicer. So you're not dedicating a lot of your week. Um, the goal here is to make sure that we can insert a lot of these courses into your educational curriculum and how it fits your life. Um, so we'll try to help work with you to select the right courses, not only to build a couple credentials to maybe get an entry level job, um, but also to sort of pick ones that fit your interest set. So as you're working, um, you're kind of almost building your own personal pathway that's interesting to you. Definitely. And so, and we can circle back at the end, but if anyone has specific questions about classes or why to choose one um, path over the other, we can definitely. Mm -hmm. And that, that graph is in our fact sheet, which is based on our website. Um, so if you just go to pvcc.edu slash IET for industrial electronics technology, you can pull up that fact sheet and, and get a nice, um, like PDF of that whole thing. And it's got a couple other pieces of info if you like this graphic. Yeah, and then I also wanted just to share that um, there's there are pathways to bachelor's degree. One thing I like a lot about this field is that um, bachelor's degree is not required. People are very employable with an associate's degree and certificates, um, but some people want to go on and get their bachelor's degree. And so we have an articulation agreement with Old Dominion University and we're, we've been building those out. And so again, if you go on our website, you'll be able to click on the links and it takes you to the specifics of what classes you need to take to transfer on after the IET program to work on your bachelor's of engineering technology. And again, you'll meet with advisors, they'll help you with that. You would take a higher level math and some higher level science mixed in with the program courses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you're feeling hardcore, you can knock it out in about two, two years if you do some summer courses. And that would set you up for just doing two more years and finishing up with a bachelor's degree. So you can actually do the whole four years. It's fairly rigorous, but it's doable for sure. And then um, we touched on this already, but then some people come and take classes just wanting to gain new skills. They have a specific skill they're after, CAD or a machine they're learning or welding or all kinds of different things. So you don't have to necessarily be pursuing it. Yeah, we've had a lot of students come in and say like, uh, my employer really wants me to learn how to program a programmable logic controller. And then we've had students who are like, uh, I have a master's degree in biotechnology, but I haven't physically done much with it. I would like to design and build stuff. How do I learn those skills? And so we have quite a range of students in the classes, which is actually pretty awesome. It creates a pretty diverse group of um, human beings and experiences and educational journeys in one place. And uh, I think it really adds a lot of value to the class that everyone has sort of their own intention of coming to a lot of these classes. Um, specifically because they are skill-based classes and we're trying to learn not only like the theory behind design stuff, but really we want to learn the tool for design. Um, so that's kind of the distinction. Yeah. Um, kind of the same thing we have. Um, a lot of people are sent 
from their employer or with strong suggestion from employers go go and take this class or get this credential to move forward in your career so um, yeah and on the flip side of that the we're gaining those skills in students who are new to the program and looking to get a job so on the flip side we're just saying well a lot of employers are taking CAD and PLC and microcontroller class uh, and they like those classes put together so it makes you a pretty employable person as a result and uh, I mean we'll get into some of the jobs but we've had a really really high success rate of placing students just because of um, the need for skills right now is is really high the amount of people with some of these specialized skills is pretty low in the area so um, anyone who's interested it's a good spot to be for employability even with everything that's going on right now I think we mentioned it but these aren't these pictures don't totally show the labs but um, they are the labs have been newly equipped with equipment that um, that students get right in and get to use and learn so yeah, the goal is really to to play with the stuff and have a safe environment to make mistakes, try stuff, um, and maybe take on your own projects so that you actually get a full experience with a lot of these tools that, you know, it's just hard to, hard to get some of that stuff at home <laughs> or have access to maybe at work or something like that. So um, that's kind of our hope there. Yeah, and that, that leads into... Another thing I love about this program is it really is project-based learning. Um, very little lecture going on, content given, but then students get right in and get to use their hands, hands-on learning. So um, a lot of students resonate with that, with wanting to use their hands and make stuff to apply concepts. So, um, Eric, did you want to, well, this is going to tell about um, yeah, we, the project a little bit you're of doing with the company. Say that again. The project you had started last spring where you all were going to uh, present to a company. And yeah, yeah. Um, so in our uh, industrial methods class, uh, we talk a lot about like manufacturing processes and um, technology and, and then we learn, uh, it's like a first introduction to a lot of the tools in the class. So we do some manual tools, um, some machine tools, and then we move on to a, a small CNC project, a laser cutting project, and a welding project. I did in that class, uh, the overarching capstone project for that class, we met with a company and they had um, these circuit testing fixtures that were really heavy, you know, like a couple hundred pounds, and they would have two people on each side lift them up into a rack and in position and whatever they were testing, they had to switch these in and out. Um, so we started a project that we, uh, we went up there with the class. We got to check out their manufacturing facility, uh, look, talk to a few engineers and technicians, um, ask them questions about the processes. We shared um, different design uh, ideas about it. And then we came up with some solutions to, to solve that problem. And then uh, we're working on flipping that to get feedback and um, the goal is to make some of those products and actually help out their manufacturing processes as part of the class experience. So um, ideally embedding some of the class curriculum into real world, like actual real world experiences that are helping out the community and engaging students in a way that I think is uh, a little more powerful than I could do by just going through a, a book here and there, which some works for some intro classes, but later on, it's really nice to be able to gather that experience. Yeah, that could, that'll be a great thing on a resume as well, and for students to be able to um, speak right away to work experience. And then totally. another, um, I was thinking about uh, Dustin, who shared how he solved that problem on, that he saw in his work on his own initiative. <laughs> that was yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. I mean, yeah, that we've seen a few students who do work currently in industry and are looking to uh, can only get promoted or can change their careers based on some credentials. So getting the associates really adds value to some of that, you know, where they, they hit their career right now. 
Um, and one of our students, yeah, has talked really positively about having new language to speak to engineers um, and being able to solve problems faster. And also just having the ability to use some of these tools and asking, he designed a, a part in CAD uh, and he took a CAD class last semester, uh, sent it to the machine shop in their facility and then they made the part and it actually saved them a ton of time in the production and actually was a, an ergonomic solution. So they were able to, you know, probably over time save some, some health benefits as well. Um, but it, it was just a great application. And I think without having some of that background skill, he finally was able to say, wait, I do have an idea. Now I can actually make it. Uh, let's, let's get together. And he had the language and the tools to be able to start that process. And they supported him because he could, you know, bring that level of expertise to the table. And, um, and that was after two classes, I think he had taken. So it was, it was pretty awesome. Yeah, that was all. he was so excited to share that. He was pretty pumped, yeah, I would be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that talks about project-based learning. And yeah, so on the flip side, I, I was, maybe I, I'm getting ahead of myself, but um, you know, I'll just say like, we also work with a lot of high schools and um, we're hoping to translate a lot of this, not only philosophy, but some of these skills down to the, the high school level. So we're working with a couple of local high schools to try to, build these pathways so that we can see a, a little bit more on the training on the earlier side of the, the education, um, which is exciting for us because we spend a lot of time with these, the last two pictures where some teachers we've worked with in some training sessions and we're teaching them how to do some of these basic skills so that they can incorporate them into their class. Um, this particular teacher is an art teacher uh, in a local school and she's fantastic. And she just wanted to learn how to incorporate electronics into some of her classes um, for fun. And uh, she learned how to solder, learned how to do some programming. And um, it was just a, it's just a lot of fun for us. And it informs us of like, what, what's happening on the other side of this um, right before students come into this experience. So we're, we're trying to expand on, on both sides, industry and um, high school experience. That was, and um, that speaks well to, there's, it works well with the different levels of learning. She was in that class with CTE teachers that had used the tools a lot. Mm -hmm. She got in and they helped her and they were, um, yeah, it's awesome class. That's fun. We, it built a nice little community. Yeah. Yes. Collaborating. Um, this was another student that spoke to, that was his favorite part of the classes was collaborating. He, um, he shared what he learned in his work at UVA, and then he learned from them as well. Um, and we've talked about, we've alluded before, but um, one reason that really helps this program thrive is our industry partnerships. And um, this, this is from our manufacturing day, but um, Maybe Eric, you could show, share about like the internship possibilities yeah. and how students get involved with that. Yeah, one of the requirements of the, the full degree is um, an internship and that's purposeful so that students have the ability to, it, it kind of forces you to go out of your comfort zone and try something. Um, many students who are working, uh, we solve this by adding another layer onto your current job. So maybe asking your supervisor, hey, can I take on a new project or a new facet? Um, and, and ideally that leads to maybe a shift in job after you try that or um, just learning a new portion of your job that normally you wouldn't have the time or experience for. Um, and then for students who are looking to up their career um, or who, who don't have currently a job in the field, this provides them an entry point to try what they're learning in the classes in, in, in real life. And um, we've seen some really great success in some of our partnerships. Um, we recently had a student uh, join a company um, that makes really high-end custom millwork, and he's working uh, there to do some CAD stuff. They moved him over to the CNC, and he made his projects uh, on the CNC machine they have there. And then he moved over to the woodworking side, the traditional machine side, and um, built the projects and assembled everything. And he uh, he actually helped solve a cool problem that they had on the floor. They needed some storage for their table saws. So they measured all their table saws and made all these storage units custom 
Um, but he got to draw them up from scratch, work with the CAD engineer, and then move that into the CAM space to design the tool paths for the machine. The machine, uh, he worked with the operator to cut them out. And then he worked with a few uh, woodworkers to build it, assemble it, and finish it, um, which is pretty awesome for uh, that. That was like a two week project. And you got to see like every facet of the company in, in two weeks and work hand by hand with them. Um, and as a result, we've seen just some positive reviews from the people who work there just saying, this is exciting. Like, you know, everyone's kind of like, we got, we got a, a guy here who's excited and wants to learn and work really hard and we need some extra hands here. And, um, you know, and, and it kind of just works out back and forth and helps us have those conversations. Like, what do you guys need? What are we trying to accomplish here? And, and the same thing, like, Hey, we we're training some students. Here's some, here's a pile of great people looking to, you know, just sort of, do something exciting and, and those are the people that we're, we're seeking out and we're finding some really just wonderful places um, in the local area manufacturers and, and small industry partners things like that so yeah it's been it's been really exciting yeah that's awesome and so that is the internship class is a requirement for the associate's degree it's three credit requirement so um, all students that are pursuing the degree would have that experience and we would work with them to connect with whatever interest, whatever pathway they're wanting to go on. Mm -hmm. um, always nice to have validation from, or excitement from industry leaders. This is um, someone I guess who yes. I say, <laughs> if they, he shared at manufacturing day, if he had a million dollars, he would, would be here learning CAD and CAM. Yeah, we're lucky. We're, we might be the best, but it's because like, we're probably one of the only ones in the area. <laughs> like the, the only child is usually the favorite, right? <laughs> um, yeah, let's see. And then, so we also have a lot of fun getting out in the community, connecting with students and different community partners. Uh, in the beginning of the fall, in the beginning of the year, most years, uh, all the area high schools come to Piedmont and we do a tech tour challenge, um, kind of exposing high schoolers to manufacturing possibilities. This is another um, big event that the um, high school program puts on, brings all the high schools. Yeah, we try, we try our best to, we always have a student or two come out and help us and, you know, work with the high school students. So it's kind of a, a nice opportunity to just help us design a fun little project for, you know, a couple, a couple minutes and some high school students and yeah. kind of interact on both sides. And sometimes the widget is made and sometimes not. <laughs> <laughs> it's all, it, they generally are happy and learning and laughing. Yeah, trying to have some fun. Um, manufacturing Day is a, is a big event in the spring. I really love that one because we get to see both sides. Uh, industry comes and shows off kind of in a job fair or industry fair format. Um, that's this room that you're seeing here. And then area high school students from most high schools come and um, they just get to see the different local opportunities cool places that they could work if this is something that interests them. And industry gets to see that the next generation of manufacturers, the high school students that are interested in that. And then they also get to see our labs, do some projects, um, some hands-on things in the lab. So that's a fun day in the spring. And community members are definitely come. You don't have to just be a high schooler. We have our students mm -hmm. as part of it as well. Uh, Katie, we have a question in the chat box. I'm going to address it for everyone. Um, Sean just asks, uh, is there a list of companies that are hiring um, or like uh, internships? Uh, one amazing resource at PVCC that I'll shout out is uh, Gigi Davis and the Office of Career Services and Andre Luck. They're uh, a great duo. Gigi hosts a um, page on career services. We can share the, I'll share the link in the chat box in a second. Um, and in that is a document with a ton of um, companies that have reached out to us. 
we also sort of try to customize the um, experience for students. So like, usually we ask like, what are you most interested in? And then we'll pare down the companies based on kind of what you're looking for. So generally, hopefully near the beginning of your career at PBCC, we can start to dial in like some of the things that you found interesting in the intro classes, or maybe you already know what you want to go into. And then we'll start looking for, for places to sort of pair up students so that they're finding the, the things that they need. Um, but Katie, myself, and Gigi have a pretty good ongoing list of, of current partners, but also places that have just reached out and said, hey, we are looking for people with these skills. Um, so there's a very good. Um, and Gigi also has a Facebook page that's updated and an email list. Um, it's pretty comprehensive and includes a lot of different areas as well. So you have to do a little sorting through that, but um, it's got a lot of stuff in there. Um, so that's, I think, a great place locally for, for us at Piedmont. Um, she's really well connected. There's also job fairs at Piedmont where a lot of these companies will come. And then, like Katie said, at Manufacturing Day, we also will you know, we host 10 to 15 different local manufacturers that we're pretty close with that are also looking for jobs. One manufacturer last year actually did on-site interviews um, on the spot and, and hired two students, uh, you know, after a second interview from there. So um, definitely a lot of great opportunity there. But uh, I'll, I'll post that link in a second in the chat. Yes. Yeah, that's Gigi Davis in career research. Career services at PVCC is a huge resource that we partner with um, in connecting students with these jobs. Yeah, and re reach out, like you can reach out to Katie and myself. We'll have our contact information. Um, and then, you know, we, we are happy to sort of sit down and talk and pair you up with something cool and, and get credit. And, you know, if our grants continue, usually we try to keep a little money in our pocket to help pay students if, if that works out for the, the internship. It's unique depending, but we, we try to. When, Eric, do you want to tell, when do students usually do their internship in their program? It depends. Sometimes stuff pops up that's really cool and people jump on it. Um, and then sometimes, you know, people are transitioning. So it works out. It's really up to you. I would say try to take a semester at least of courses have something under your belt. So when you do start the internship, you're kind of balanced out with some of your classes and then also starting like, you know, depending on the hours, another commitment. So anytime I think second semester and off, usually people start it in their second year and usually get a full year underneath the belt just to get a bunch of intro classes out of the way. Yeah, that's a great question. We could, um... Manufacturing day, we get like we were saying, we get out into the high schools a lot to um, just work with CTE classes and let students know that this these kind of programs are out there. We also get to do put on um, some awesome series, um, learning from different people in the field. We're doing a women in STEM speaker series that has been awesome. We do that about once or twice a year. Um, we are, then we have um, the leaders from the companies that we work with come and talk. Sometimes they talk in our classrooms. Um, and this was for Dr. Burke Hark Hawkins from the NRAO gave a discussion on what they're doing. And, and then they also had, he had two technicians come with him and they told about their jobs at the NR NRAO. <laughs> Was really fascinating. One of them was a PBCC electronics alumni and she shared what she was doing there and that was really cool to hear from her and then she came back for manufacturing day. Yeah. Uh, De Debbie has a great comment in the chat box to monitor the chat box. Um, <laughs> she said that Barry Global and Waynesboro had some openings uh, not to shout out specific companies but in general, uh, Debbie's right on, on the nose. A lot of these positions are pretty well paid because it's hard to find people trained in these areas. Um, so like literally, if you're looking for a solid career, it's these are career jobs, not just like, 
oh, I could get started here or there. These are places that have a lot of growth and are offering really good starting places to keep you comfortable. Um, so it's, it's definitely something to think about. And shout out to Nick. Thanks, Denise and Katie, for helping me get back into the classroom. That's great. Awesome. Great job. Team. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Nick. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Nick. You've been great to have in class. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Well, I think so. We were going to, we were going to, I think that's all obviously leading up to yeah. most folks want to know about what kind of careers, understandably, you can do with these classes. And um, yeah, and then we can just answer questions. We were going to watch a bit, four minute video, but we can yeah. just talk. Yeah, maybe we'll, so maybe we'll take questions now and just see what um, questions people have about the program or, you know, results of, you know, taking classes or finishing with an associate's degree um, and further, or, if, you know, people want to add anything, just let us know. Or Denise, if you have common questions, people ask then, and, and maybe there's something we missed, feel free to. When um, I get a question from some of these um, on the website, there's a, you know, ask questions. It's usually a broad question. Like they want to know, well, what's the difference between mechanical engineering and industrial engineer? They want to know what the difference and commonalities are between the different programs yeah. under manufacturing. I don't know if you can. We can, we, I can do a short overview. We actually recorded a video, Erica Fultz and I, Describing the differences between our program and engineering, uh, just so, because this question is pretty common for us as well. Um, we also get a lot of students who start in engineering and are like, well, I actually want to do more hands-on stuff. And then they pop over to my program, our program. And then there's people who are in our program and are like, wait, I want to become like an engineer, engineer and get a four-year degree and go to Virginia Tech. And then they flop over. So um, there is definitely some, some confusion and commonality and cross, crossover. Um, if you are interested in hands-on learning the tools, learning how the tools work, um, developing multiple skills, so like doing things, um, then our program is geared towards that type of learner, that type of person. If you want a career where you're creating, building, designing, making, then this is the pathway for you. If you are interested in the theory and the mathematics, the physics, and how things work and designing uh, for constraints, um, and you want to be more in the theoretical world and maybe just um, doing high level design and not seeing the parts to production, um, then engineering is generally the field for you. Um, we can kind of relate this to the Bolt example the guy who ran the machine to cut the bolt would come from our program. The guy who drew the bolt in CAD would probably come from an engineering program. And there would be a lot of people in between for sure. Um, but those are pretty two easy distinctions. Um, we teach CAD to be able to manipulate the designs and understand the tool. Um, a lot of times engineering programs will teach CAD to not only understand the tool to a degree, but be able to take things and analyze them. So we're, le we're more on the make the parts versus analyzing the parts. That's a great description. That really that helps me to help other, tell other people. Yeah, academically, they're very different pathways. Um, you'll take a lot of levels of calculus and, you know, um, like discrete math and linear algebra and like high level physics in an engineering program. Uh, we have no science requirements. Most of our students get solid career jobs after the associates and technical math is our highest mathematics, which leaves more room for classes in the field. Whereas engineering, there's a lot of uh, more general requirements. Every student who takes on engineering is a transfer student to a four year pathway. Most of our students are two year students for an associate's degree. Do you want to, could you also maybe speak to why, why would one choose the electronics or what kind of jobs and the differences between the electronic specialization and the mechanical specialization or why would we choose the general? Yeah, totally. Um, 
the electronics pathway is set up for um, just, just that. If you're interested in doing some assembly of circuit boards, running uh, production of PCBs, um, soldering, um, doing component level stuff and some testing of like hardware. Um, a lot of, those are a lot of the electronics jobs around here. Um, so if that interests you, there's some really interesting electronics manufacturers um, that do some really cool stuff. Having some places like NRIO in our area, they require really specialized electronics, which also includes some really cool partners um, in the area. Um, if you're interested in building like mechanical systems, if you find you know, cars to be exciting, if you like machining, um, if you like woodworking, um, the, the mechanical specialization is probably more up your alley. Um, that'll be more focused on um, like mechanisms. Um, there's another CAD section in there. There's a statics class. So learning how forces affect objects and then designing around that. Um, so it's slightly different. There is a pretty good amount of overlap. Like there's a robotics applications class that actually sits in all three of the degree programs and hopes to combine the mechanical electronics and the control um, so that you can kind of see all of these things influence each other. Um, so there's overlap on purpose and then there's separation so that people can dive a little deeper. We often get a lot of students who are like, yeah, that class was cool, but I kind of want another one of these. Um, so we, that's why we developed the, the pathways and industry is starting to say like, okay, we need more of this type of student or we need more of this type of person um, out in the field. So these pathways should hopefully allow for a little more specialization to say, yeah, I took a couple extra electronics courses. So I think I'm definitely prepared. Yeah, that's helpful. Mm -hmm. Any other questions from the audience? Maybe I'll... I'm gonna go back to our emails in case. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, feel free to reach out to us. Um, we're pretty responsive. If you just want general class questions or you want to talk about the program, I'm happy to chat. And, and if you're interested in like inserting yourself in or seeing the opportunities, Katie can help you get set up. Um, in the program or taking classes or just seeing it from the PVCC perspective. Um, but e either one of us will really move it along. Um, I post a good amount of stuff when it's not like pandemic uh, of some of the stuff in the classroom on Instagram. And you can see my Instagram uh, handle is at the bottom there. So if you want to sift through a bunch of pictures of what students have done in the classes or what they're working on, you can kind of get a few action shots um, I've posted a couple personal things lately just because uh, classes are, you know, not as uh, exciting. <laughs> awesome. Uh, it, yeah. Wonderful. Thank you, Denise, for setting this up. This You're is welcome. a great Thank way to connect. And Katie, this has been very informative. I know a lot more about it and what we offer at PBCC. And thank everyone, the audience, for coming tonight. Yeah, definitely.